because um, we have another lecture after this, so if I can finish up a little early, that'll be good. So welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a great summer. Um, a lot of exciting things going on with EPICS. Um, one of the things that we're really excited about is we're going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary. So EPIC started here in 1995 and we've been going for 20 years. When EPIC started there were six teams and 40 students. Now we're over like 450 to 500 students with 36 teams. In addition, I don't know if you're aware that EPIC is actually, um, we have other universities that have replicated uh, the EPICS program. There's 25 of those and we actually have EPICS in the K-12 high schools and middle schools and we have nearly a hundred of those schools. So not only has EPICS grown here, it's grown nationally and internationally. Uh, Professor Oakes was in India, did a workshop with faculty there, nearly a hundred faculty in India. So trying to change educational system around the world. Um, so pretty exciting things that are going on. Um, we're going to have a tailgate on September 19th. The unique opportunity Purdue is actually playing at 3.30 instead of noon. So uh, if you want to come join us, uh, we'll have some food and some cake to celebrate our 20th anniversary. So welcome to um, participate. I, in my link I sent in that the email I sent yesterday, there is a place you can RSVP. It's actually a Qualtrics survey. You just fill that out real quickly. Um, that would be helpful for us. Another really exciting thing from the summer is that we have a new website. So I don't know if you've all been there, but oh, here it is. Want to spend a little bit of time and show you some of the things that are that have changed or what's going on in the website. So this is our main page and one of the things we wanted to be able to do because we have all the university programs and the K-12, we wanted this to be a space that all that represented the whole EPICS program and not just EPICS Purdue. So um, if you search for EPICS you'll actually end up on this page but where you're probably going to want to spend most of your time and what you probably will want to bookmark is this EPICS Purdue uh, page. So we're using the template like the university, although the university just changed their template. Um, so, but the format should be familiar. We have three things up at the top where probably one of the things you would use most, looking at the milestone schedule, which you have a copy of. You wanted to take a look at that so you can see what's going on there. And then my epics in SharePoint. There's navigation across the top as well. Um, and these match what's down here, except we do have one additional one. So if you want to look at information for the different roles, you can go here and see information for, for example, the financial officer. Okay? So you can direct students to that. Um, other things that we have done, there, there are a few things that are not quite working yet. We rolled this out about a week and a half before classes started. Um, and there's some programming that ECN needs to do that isn't done yet to be able to support it. What we intend to do is to be able to have, um, it'll draw from my epics and actually list the next lecture, skill session, individual assignment and team assignment. So one of the things we've done is to add individual and team assignments to my epics. If you've happened to wander in there, you might see them. Uh, but that way, it's all in one place. You can see what's going on there, and we can track all of that in my epics versus having kind of separate things that we were doing with that. Um, what are some other things um, that we wanted to be able to show here? Well, Things here that I think are key are uh, EPICS Labs. So here's the information, um, some information about the lab so you can see uh, that there. One of the other changes that we've made is that the model release form and the safety form are now in my EPICS. So you just need to go and do a digital accept 
acknowledge of that and then you're done with that so we don't have to turn in those forms uh, related to that. So um, here's information if you wanted to see kind of the guidelines. Whoops. Yes, I did want to open it. Related to um, so the safety awareness and use guidelines if you have any questions related to that. We're still storing them on um, SharePoint for that. Um, a couple other things related to resources. So if you have a question about whether or not we have things in the lab or where to find it, you can either ask Andrew Pierce, our lab manager, or you can search our lab inventory. So it's not a really good format right now. We're trying, we're looking, hoping to make this uh, nicer, but if you wanted to see do we have any hammers, you can um, actually see, yes, we have hammers and where they are located, okay? So if you have any questions about that. One of the things we're really trying to do is make things as efficient for you so that you can make as much, get as much progress done on your projects as possible. So what are ways, and if you're searching around the lab for things, you're not going to be spending time getting project work done. So, okay. The other thing is that we've added a second 3D printer to the lab. Um, it has a larger uh, print capability and it also has higher resolution. So, um, and it offers us a second 3D printer if one of them should go down. So we're hoping to have a little bit more throughput with that this semester. The other thing that we have done is created an online 3D print request. So if you have anything that you need to do, you can just submit the 3D request form. It doesn't cost very much money to actually do the 3D print, and um, it is a great way to get feedback on your design. So in the spirit of prototyping and having physical objects that we can use to facilitate and get feedback, I highly recommend that you make use of this sooner than later. The one problem that we run into is that we often wait till like the week before design review to do maybe a 3D model and then there's a big back jam with it. Okay, so if you think about how can we utilize this resource sooner than later, um, I think it can be really helpful for the different projects. So, okay. What else do I want to show you? Um, the different schedules are here, uh, just like in the past. And so, um, being able to find all those different uh, resources for that. Under other resources, um, there's some information on how to um, access my epics in SharePoint. You guys all should be familiar with that, but in case people are having trouble not putting one Purdue before SharePoint or things like that, um, you have access for that. The other thing I wanted to show you too is that um, Andrew has done a, um, see if this will work, has developed a really nice tutorial for the Arduino and that we're going to be developing more of these uh, throughout the semester for a variety of different things. So it's going to speak to us. But you can see the parts of the Arduino. It's really interactive. You can do the button. And now the challenge at the end. So it's really interactive. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. So these are resources that we're going to continue to add. Whoops, I just exited out. Um, to our, um, the resources. I suspect in a year we won't be having big lectures like this anymore. Um, there are some things in the works that I wouldn't be surprised if we're not over six or seven hundred students in a year from now. And so if that's the case, there's not even a room on campus that can hold all of us. So we're really going to try and get some of this content online and have the time that you're interacting with, have the time that we are scheduled to have a more interactive. So um, this is all building uh, towards that. Okay, um, 
one of the other things I wanted to show you, so in my epics, um, and you're going to see my view of this, which is um, there's a lot more capability, but one of the things, so the different activities that I talked about, we don't have the course deliverables schedule anymore, that list of things that were due. It's all in my epics now. So if you want to search and see what are the individual assignments that I need to do over the course of the semester, you can just do this, search for individual assignments, and you can see those. I think you actually get them all printed out um, from the student view of that. So these are all the things that you need to do. Um, and then team assignments, they're in here as well. Okay. The other thing that we have the ability to do is um, if we look, and I'm going to go ahead and pull um, here, I'll, you can enter your project information into my epics. So often we wanted to know what are the different projects going on and who's assigned to what project. And so now we have the capability of being able to do that. Okay. All right. Those are the main things related to that. Um, okay. Hey, one other, I keep getting out of here, thing that I wanted to show you is on SharePoint, um, we've actually implemented um, So the two of the teams had done a pilot of using the OneNote notebooks last uh, semester, um, ISBVI and CED, um, and actually got really pretty favorable responses from that. But one of the things that they noticed is that they hadn't provided any structure to those design notebooks um, last semester. So Andrew created uh, a notebook, notebook template. You should talk to your advisor about whether or not um, your team is going to be using this, but most of the TAs and the advisors have been pretty favorable about moving to the OneNote um, uh, um, the digital notebooks. So for example, so you can see what this looks like. Um, we talked about it and we're going to be doing this on Slack. One of the things is you're going to want to do this at a project level. So um, your project team will probably need to agree whether or not at least that you do it, if not your entire team. But one of the things that you can do is it has, um, I don't know if it'll let me do this. It was complaining before. So. We have within the design, the, the notebooks, the digital notebooks, there's a design notebooks phase, there's a, a tab that corresponds to the semester, and then there's tabs for each individual. So you can keep all of that information together. The other thing is, is if you add something to your individual notebook and it needs to go into the design, you can actually very quickly copy and paste and put it into the design. So hopefully that's something that will facilitate better documentation. So this format was put in here. This is what we've used in the past. You're welcome to have um, used this or copy over another format if your team has uh, used one previously. For the fall, this has a week by week. So you can put your pigs right into this design notebook, and then that way you can just show, um, you know, every week you can just actually uh, do pigs from the design notebook. You don't have to create a separate presentation for that. And then um, students, each of you will make copies of this tab, and it will show. Oh, 
not liking it. Yeah. Okay. Already I can show the Camp Riley one. Yeah. So here for individual, there's like weekly things that you can just enter your weekly goals and there's some prompts there. So this is a way. One of the things too to show is that this actually interfaces really well with um, like your, um, your phones or your laptops. Um, if you go under notebook guidelines here, so this is kind of the same content that was there before, but if you go down to the bottom, there are instructions, whoops, what happened? I'll have to find out where that went. Um, there are instructions on how to set up the OneNote. So I'll see what happened with that. I'll fix that web page. So any questions on that? I know it's kind of boring to go through the website, but we've relied on the website so much in the past. Um, I thought it was worth doing that. The one thing to also, as a result, we're not going to be doing um, weekly emails. I know you love them anyway, and most of the time didn't even read them. Unless you were the project manager, maybe you pulled a little bit of stuff to put on your agenda. But you already have 90%, 99% of that information that I would send anyway. The lecture schedule, you already have it. It's established. You can look at it right now and see where all the lectures are. I don't need to tell you week by week where they are. I also don't need to tell you week by week when things are due. And you can go in my epics and find out where the skill sessions are for the next week. Okay? So those are things that were all available to you already. And so I will save my emails to send you fun announcements about job opportunities, scholarships. If there is something that's going on in Epics where we need to change a room, I'll let you know about that. But that's really what I'm going to do and not do the weekly email. Again, you can look at the website here and you can look at my Epics to see what's upcoming. Okay, or look at the milestone schedule for that. So, I know you always look forward to getting that email every week. You knew life was good when you got the email around 5 o'clock on Sunday, um, but we're not going to do that. So, all right, where was I? So, I think I've already covered most of this. The course deliverables, now in my epics that I showed you. The forms, the lab safety form, and the model release. How many have already completed that in my epics? Yeah. So if you go in, it should uh, remind you or give you a notice until you've completed them. And once you're completed, then it won't even show up on your page anymore. Okay, I showed you the OneNote um, notebooks, and I will figure out what, what happened with the setup. Because it does take, anybody who was on CED or ISBVI used the, um, the electronic notebooks last semester. Yeah, so do you want to talk about that at all? Um, kind of what you needed to do to get set up and, and did you, was it, did it work well once you got it set up? It was nice to get to see everyone's information and if you needed help with something, to be honest, you could be in two separate dorms and just like hold back and forth with each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was super easy. You literally just like follow the link and OneNote actually opens up in the web browser. I don't think you can use, use it with Chrome, but any other ones work. Okay. Like, like when I was working on like my notebooks and stuff like that, like I could go and like cross collaborate or like look at someone else's pictures for the week and like we worked on the same project, just grab one from there. Um, it was just really awesome. So again, like showing evidence that I did this, you could just throw a picture in there or a caption for it. it yeah. Was, it was really convenient. Yeah. It's a lot easier for the TAs to be able to read them as well. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who have challenging handwriting, this is actually probably to your benefit. Yeah, you should be able to, um, you know, upload a picture with your phone. Um, it actually makes it really easy. Um, if there's something you guys have worked on together, absolutely can copy that. Just reference something we worked on together. So hopefully it'll make it a little easier. So I do have a question, though. All right. 
So most of you complain about documentation, hate to do it, everybody does. But I guess if you were to identify what are the things that are highest priority to pay attention to? Did you walk in, did any of you walk into a project last semester or maybe the semester before? What was it that you most wanted to know that wasn't provided? Yeah. Nobody commented their code. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, sometimes, like what people didn't do and why. So they would have explored an avenue and decided it wouldn't work on the project. And I actually saw a new student came and, and started going down that same avenue, and I was able to be like, we didn't do that. And yeah. they hadn't written why, but we like, had to like, dig way down to figure out why it was going to our project. Yep. What else? Those are all great ones. Communications with like partners and stuff like that. Yeah. Communication with partners, even telling the story. You know, because sometimes I felt like, you don't understand, we've been partnering with them for so many years and we haven't delivered a project. We need to, you know, be aware of those kinds of issues. Yes? Sometimes they have to like information about the old model, so like a detailed remark, but like pictures or like the actual physical old models would have been helpful. Yeah, no, I agree. So just a little bit of an explanation. A lot of times that can help a lot with the evidence of your critical thinking. Um, as far as this is an old model, this is why it didn't work, this is why we moved away. It doesn't take a lot, but um, you know, just having those pictures or I'll see a circuit and I'm like, well, what's the circuit for? Are we actually using this one? What are the advantages, disadvantages? Anything else related to? So we'll see if a combination of the uh, new digital format um, and kind of this awareness of what, it, what kinds of information are needed uh, to best support and move projects forward, I think will be really key for them. Okay. Um, I already told you, no weekly email, project info. One of the things is I think admin will have to add projects to my epics to be able to assign them, uh, assign students. So um, in the past, project <laughs> managers and TAs have been able to assign students to different roles in my epics, um, and they should be able to do that for projects. It's actually something I haven't totally tested out yet, so we'll see how that works. Um, but you'll have to let us know. So just email it to epics at purdue.edu if you have a list of projects. Um, and it's not already in my epics. Uh, we have a couple of opportunities for collaboration again this semester. So there are two teams that are going to have students from the Entrepreneurship 390 class who are actually going to be participating on the epics team as part of their class. And they're going to be doing, uh, developing a business plan uh, for projects in GLASS and SVAT this semester. So this is a pilot. We're going to see how it goes. Hopefully it's something we can expand, especially for teams who are looking at um, how to have a broader impact and could benefit from the development of that. So pretty excited about that. We're also going to have the opportunity to have some interaction design students. So there's 18 graduate students who are taking a class on um, interaction design. and they uh, will participate on an EPICS team like a one credit hour student. Um, this has been, has anybody worked with any of the interaction design students in the past? Had that experience? So, um, generally this is a great resource for your team if, if you really, um, if you haven't had the opportunity. Um, they are, a lot of them have industrial design background, product design. And so they can look and help to improve the user interface and go through the steps of what you would actually do as you are interacting with either your software or your product. Um, so highly recommend. Um, I'm really excited about that. And uh, hopefully you'll, it'll be good for you guys as well. Um, the wallet exercise, I know. Many of you really have enjoyed that, but uh, we're going to do it in lecture again. So you won't be doing it in lab. You can uh, use your lab time for other things. But we're going to introduce design thinking and our human-centered approach to design. 
uh, using the wallet exercise in the lecture for the new students. So it is something we can draw from. I think sometimes it's eye-opening what a seven-minute prototype can actually uh, facilitate as far as getting feedback. Um, really, again, want you to keep thinking about prototyping. And um, we're going to continue to try and add things to the lab to be able to support more prototyping because I think that's critical uh, to get feedback early and often um, throughout the design process. Um, the card access system, I think, has been programmed. I was talking to Andrew right before I walked over. Might be a couple hiccups, but by tomorrow morning, it should be all programmed. One of the things, though, is we have your student ID, but all of you on your, um, on your Purdue IDs, you actually have a last digit that is your issue number. And so we guess what that is, but we don't really know what it is for anybody. It's not published. Um, it's just embedded in your card. And so we um, have to guess what that is. However, if you swipe your card, the card access system, even if it fails, it gives Andrew a message that he can update it with just like a click. He can accept that new number. So it notifies him that you tried to swipe, that there was an error, and he can update the system right away. So in your labs, make sure you have everybody to swipe any one of the card access systems and that will facilitate getting that updated with all the information we need for that. So, um, second 3D printer, I also talked about that. Yes? Huh? Um, so, just go whenever you're walking by, you can just swipe or do it next week. So, Andrew usually can respond to that within like 24 hours. So once he sees the notice that it failed, he can update it uh, related to that. Okay. Um, I showed you all of this already with the website. So no more changes to the roles. Um, seems like it's been working pretty well. We're going to continue to have um, skill sessions for the project archivist in addition to um, with um, Dr. Megan Sapp Nelson. Um, for that, so, um, and um, more, uh, also pro uh, skill sessions that are targeted towards leadership and project management. So, kind of all of that is the same. Um, budget, financial, uh, again, if uh, we do our budgets on an annual basis, uh, we looked at what money we had from team sponsorship, the companies that have donated money. And we are using a percentage of that, about 80% of it, that we're going to allocate towards team projects for the year. Okay. If your team doesn't need to spend more than $200, you don't really even have to turn in a budget form. But if you anticipate that you're going to need more than $200, then you do need to turn in a budget. You can spend up to that $200 without turning in a budget. So we want you to be able to get going right away on your projects. But if you're going to reach that point, then you do need to do that. I know it's hard to anticipate what's going to happen for the year, but um, actually if you can do that, that's a good practice because you're going to have to do that in industry. Um, there's budget cycles, and so learning to kind of project what might be needed uh, in the future is actually a really good uh, learning opportunity and, and exercise. Highly recommend all of you who are eligible to apply for the service learning grants from the provost to please do that. In the past, you've been able to help supplement our budget by between sixteen and twenty thousand dollars, which is huge. We can do a whole lot more when we get that money. So it has to be student initiated. You have to do that. Looked it up. The deadline for this semester is October first. You can submit it before that, but I don't know when they're going to make the decisions, if they're going to make all the decisions on October 1st. They certainly said that you could submit it after, but it would be only if there were money still available that they would consider it. So I'm not 100% sure based on the website if you apply next week, if they'll give you a decision sooner than later, they might on that. Uh, certainly within EPICS, we do. Um, 